is the process by which the principles of the fast food restaurant coming out of the U.S., efficiency, calculability, and predictability, are coming to dominate the world. Now you'll note here that this idea of McDonaldization extends Weber's concept. He had that concept of rationalization. What is rationalization? It's the application of the most efficient means to achieve a given end. The most efficient means to achieve a given end. So it's a highly kind of strategic, uh, capitalist-oriented uh, dynamic that, in part, is, uh, is spreading throughout the world. It's part of this technologization. So think about it. You've got this rich tradition and rich culture in Indonesia. And now you've got this American culture, which potentially threatens to come in and kind of bulldoze all of that out and replace it with this sort of these fast food principles, uh, efficiency, calculability, and predictability. So in a certain way, you might understand why, why some people, some communities, some societies, some cultures are resistant to this kind of uh, imperialism, if you will, and cultural imperialism. Okay, there are alternative views. So McDonaldization is not the only way to think about globalization. Uh, and here are a few of the alternative views. One view, or, or the alternative views, tend to think that, um, in fact, the spread of culture from the US and Canada and parts of Western Europe to the rest of the world is a bit more complicated. Uh, and simply a kind of bulldozer rolling over and crushing everything in its path. Uh, these are folks that believe that the process is more complicated because when a given cultural form, like let's say McDonald's comes to your country and sets up a shop on your corner, uh, what we find is that people don't really let their let go entirely of their traditional cultures or identities. They're a little more resistant to that. And what we find might be more of a bricolage, right? A bricolage, meaning a kind of bringing together of both one's local, uh, indigenous, native culture and identity, and combining that or taking elements of that and, and, and combining that with the new, elements of the new. So you get a kind of admixture or a hybrid formation that really isn't a perfect replication of the, of the original but in fact represents something new. So the idea here is that people always interpret globalization through existing structures of meaning, through existing cultures and institutions and traditions. And these traditions, in turn, can change that original cultural form. So here we have the second term on the slide, globalization. Globalization refers to the simultaneous homogenization, or the making of the same, of some aspects of life, and at the same time, the strengthening of some local differences under the impact of globalization. So let me give you a concrete example. Let's, let's stick with McDonald's. McDonald's arrives on the shores of Taiwan. And what happens? Well, what we find is that local consumers, when they go to McDonald's, would really like to eat some beetle nuts. So somehow or another, if you go to Taiwan and you enter McDonald's, you're going to see that most of the burgers come with beetle nuts. I don't even know what beetle nut is. Well, I don't know if it's an actual, I don't think it's a bug. I actually think it's a, it's a kind of nut. But in any event, uh, OK. Forget about Taiwan. Let's go to India. In India, what do you have? You know how Indians often hear the cow. Well, what you have is vegetarian burgers. Very common in, uh, in Indian McDonald's. I don't really know that the U.S. or Indian McDonald's has a vegetarian burger, do they? Uh, if you go to Israel, what do you find? Mitzvah. It's a mitzvah. You find a kosher burger. Go to Israel and have a kosher burger. 
Send one back to me. I'd love to see it. Uh, if you go to the Netherlands, you know what you're going to find? You're going to find a McCrocket. What is the McCrocket? It's made of 100% beef ragu fried from batter. Mm. Uh, if you go to Hawaii, what do you find? You find just the regular old Big Mac? No. You find Japanese ramen noodles are served in burgers. Okay, so have we're already to throw up from the beetle to the ragu. Uh, what can we say? We can say that we're ugly Canadians, that we only like our own McDonald's our own way. Isn't that part of that commercial design? Uh, well, people do it their own way with McDonald's. They do that throughout the globe. They take the American-based product of the, the uh, Big Mac and they transform it. They, they change it around. They introduce different elements in order to conform to the local culture. Okay, another way in which the McDonaldization thesis is challenged. You have localization, you also have regionalization. So what is regionalization? It refers to the division of the world into different and often competing economic, political, and cultural areas. slide that tries to grapple with the regionalization of world trade. So this slide gives us one aspect of regionalization. Uh, uh, and what you find is that with regionalization, even if it's all of this change, all of this globalization, certain regions will, in response to that, um, consolidate and intensify their own sense of difference from another region. So they, they hold on even tighter to their own particular distinct way of being, way of living, way of seeing the things, way of eating. Uh, and that becomes consolidated as a way to distinguish itself from everyone else. So a regionalization often takes sort of the local culture, local tradition, local ideas, and sharpens them and makes them even more distinct from the standard global uh, product. And in doing so, then they can market that. So it almost becomes like part of a niche marketing strategy. So there is that aspect of, of uh, globalization as well. Now you can see regionalization politically in the, in the European Union. Most European countries now share the same currency, the euro, uh, and they coordinate economic, political, and, and, and cultural policies. So in a way, because the globe has gotten so small, um, it's also gotten so big. It's gotten so big that now a region isn't just like the northern region of France. It's now uh, half a continent. It's now most of Europe, which sees itself as a particular region, with a particular culture, and a particular identity. Yes, Germany is different from France, which is different than Ireland, which is different than England, et cetera, et cetera. Yet, there are enough similarities uh, across those countries relative to the US or Australia or the Middle East or Asia that it now is consolidated into this kind of new super region. So the dynamics of McDonaldization and globalization and regionalization are fluid, uh, they're complex, and what they show is that globalization is not simply the steamroller of sort of the powerful uh, over the less powerful. Alright, now, some are not happy at all with any of these possibilities uh, and see ultimately uh, in globalization dark data. And those folks tend to be part of the anti-globalization movement, which I'm going to talk to you about. Some of you may have participated in the anti-globalization movement, or you may have seen it. You've seen it on TV, you've seen it in the streets of Toronto. Uh, there's one really fascinating book on the topic, I urge you to read it if you're interested on this. Uh, in 1992, Benjamin Barber produced a book called Jihad vs. Make World. Now, in Make World, of course, you hear globalization. Jihad uh, means striving and struggle in Arabic. And traditionally, Muslim, Muslims use that term jihad to mean perseverance 
in achieving the very high moral standards. So Barber looks at globalization and sees these sort of two forces at work. On the one hand, there's this methodization, uh, which is the homogenization of culture and all under the, um, under the uh, force of capitalism, global capitalism, on the one hand. But then you also have the kind of jihadist movement, which isn't really just political, it means more generally culturally, which is that people are trying to hold on to their, their own particular cultures and values and resist westernization and resist globalization. They try to struggle for a higher standard. So that's the jihad part. Now, anti-globalization movements, in a way, are part of that jihad movement, or at least are represent a deep critique of global capitalism uh, as, it, as it flows through the world in multinational corporations. Now, a lot of these movements are not violent. Um, you hear it all the time, like there'll be a major international uh, conference on global commerce. Uh, and big member states of the UN, let's say, will show up. And you'll see there'll be protests on the street. Uh, people are protesting the power of uh, transnational corporations. Uh, and also governments that support them. Most of these are peaceful. Uh, there was a great one in the spring of 2001. Actually, it took place in Quebec City. And it was a, uh, a global conference on economic integration of the Americas. Well, the protesters built these large wooden catapults. And they had thousands of miniature teddy bears. And they took these teddy bears and they catapulted them uh, at the police and at political officials. So this was clearly a kind of non-violent, unless you think getting pelted with teddy bear, miniature teddy bear is a violent strategy. I don't really think so. Uh, it was a kind of clever way to draw attention to uh, the movement without getting into guns and, and batons uh, and tear gas. Now, of course, the, the anti-globalization protests that we're most familiar with are those that attract the most media attention because uh, precisely they're violent. Uh, there was recently, uh, a couple of years ago, in Seattle, there was a huge protest, and uh, it was quite ugly. And I want to uh, show you a bit of that to kind of bring this home. So in this video, you're going to hear a lot of the concerns of the anti-globalization uh, uh, activists. And you'll also see some of the responses by the police. The big demonstrations are over. The people are going to try and get down. Block the roadways. We're not going to allow that to happen. The weapons are preparing to all on you. Let's just go to the big zone, it's really clear, fucking intersection, none of that. 